All right, guys, today we are going to be breaking down and taking a look again at my truck gun and doing a little bit of a comparison between the truck gun of the past and the truck gun of the future and kind of talking about not only what this gun is, but why I chose to make this gun the truck gun. So we're going to take a look at this one, like I said, talk about what it is, what it's chambered in, and then talk about um, why I chose it in comparison to this one. Now I did previously talk about this gun in a previous video, but I didn't really, or I kind of forgot to mention my previous truck gun, my previous go-to um, bear kind of uh, woods gun and kind of explain why I made the jump. So for those who don't know, the previous kind of um, truck gun slash brush gun for me, and this was the also kind of like wilderness survival gun for the truck. Um, so like whenever you're going off-roading, whenever going, um, on roads like the Denali Highway, stuff like that, where you're out, you know, hundreds of miles away from the nearest civilization. And so you need something not only for protection, but also potentially if you have to, you know, hunker down, shelter in place, having something that can, you know, secure uh, food for you. That is the kind of premise of the truck gun. And for me specifically, it's a little bit different. I know a lot of people on YouTube have talked about truck guns for like self-defense in urban situations. For me, it's not terribly applicable. But the reason in the formulation for a truck gun for me is more because I go to distant uh, locations, like I said, places like D the Denali Highway, where you are hundreds of miles from any civilization. And even the nearest civilizations in those regards are still very basic, very um, not primal, but very basic um, kind of villages almost. I think they're classified by the, the people of Alaska by, as essentially villages. So they're not really particularly going to provide, you know, like top of the line healthcare, or top of the line equipment. Uh, and so being able to find provisions and potentially, you know, save your life is going to be very important. Self-sufficiency is number one. So that is what gave birth to the truck gun. Now, for some people, they may see, you know, why don't you use a Marlin guide gun? Why don't you use um, the, you know, uh, was it like Alaska? Uh, wild or Wild West Alaska's um, breakdown guide gun. There's a handful of other guns. And for me, I always wanted something that was super handy, super portable, and super light in addition, or as light as reasonably possible to be fair, but something that carried still a hard hitting round. So a, a gun that for the caliber it has and for the overall size and length punches above its weight. And for me, that first came out I also wanted something that was reasonably affordable. This is the type of gun that um, you guys know I have some more expensive guns. I've had the Desert Eagle in the past. That's about a $2,000 gun. I have the Prodigy that's about, you know, a $13 to $1,500 gun. Um, you know, I have some more expensive, not super crazy expensive guns, but for the truck gun, I wanted something that was more affordable, but still reliable and still carried punch. But it was the type of gun that it realistically is not going to see that much use, right? This is not a, okay, I'm gonna go caribou hunting, or I'm gonna go moose hunting, or I'm gonna go, you know, hunting with this gun in particular, though you certainly can with this gun. This could easily take down a moose, but, uh, or a caribou or anything like that. But however, I, this was just something that wasn't necessarily gonna be a frontline rifle for me. It was just that purpose of throw it in the truck when going out, you know, into the wild and have it as a backup um, gun in case you need something a little bit harder hitting than a handgun, or in case you are, you know, like spending the night at a camp site and a bear decides to show up, right? So that was kind of the core premise to it. And so I want to say that was affordable, something that I punched above its weight and something that was reasonably handy. And so once again, these aren't, you know, like the most handy of rifles, but once again, it is a repeating gun. This is, you know, obviously a 94, so it is a lever gun, repeats. And so, yeah. So like I said, the first gun that I arrived at for this truck gun purpose was the Winchester 94. This one of course is in 3030. Um, and I feel like this is a gun that once again, for its size, this is actually slightly smaller than the gun that's replacing it. It is also incredibly thin thin and that's really nice because once again when you're throwing you know camping gear in your truck or you're trying to go overlanding and stuff having a thin compact rifle that still fires a rifle you know cartridge something harder heading than 44 magnum or 357 magnum um, is very nice and so that's why that's what attracted me to especially the winchester 94 because winchesters because they are top ejecting lever action rifles are notorious for having very short or very um, narrow frame 
names to them. So they are very, very handy in that regard. Now, once again, I also like the fact that not only is this 30-30, but it is also um, a lever action. So you do have that repeatability. It's not quite semi-automatic, but you know, you can work this pretty, pretty well, pretty fast. And so, of course, like with practice and such, and of course the um, sights are pretty, pretty user friendly. Of course, this one is also a hooded front sight model. And I also chose the hooded front sight for the specific reason that uh, once again, when you're just throwing this in the truck or, you know, this is like getting banged around. Um, traditional 94s have just an exposed front sight post that can get bent or broken off. So I really like having a hooded front sight because once again, if this is, gets thrown in, in the truck and it happens to, even if it happens to fall out of the truck or whatnot, you know, for whatever happens, having the hooded front sight gives you that little bit of added protection for your sighting system. So overall, this was the gun. It served its role, I think, just fine. Honestly, I have no problems or qualms with 30-30. Typical 30-30 rounds um, put out about 2,000 pound-feet of energy. So, you know, we're not talking a 50 BMG. We're not talking 300 Win Mag, but it is a decent round. And of course, 30-30 um, has taken down many black bears, which is honestly the primary threat. If, if a bear is really going to raid, you know, a campsite, if it's really going to harass you most of the time, and of course, like I said, this isn't like a hard and fast rule, but the majority of the time it will be a black bear, not a grizzly, not a brown. Typically brown bears, grizzly bears, um, even Kodiak browns are more interested in fish. So, so long as they don't feel that you pose a threat to their, like so long as it's not a sow that feels that you're posing a threat to cubs, or so long as it's not a bear that feels that's you are encroaching on its territory um, of like its fishing area, the chances of you being um, attacked by a brown bear or a grizzly is pretty, pretty low. So once again, I want to make, make it clear that it's not a zero chance, but it's pretty darn low. All right, so now let's talk about what I replaced it with and why. So of course, like I said, in, I've mentioned in a previous video, this is a Lee Enfield. This is a number five Mark I. This was made in 1946. This is, so it makes it a number one for the, or sorry, makes it a number five model, Mark I. And so that's the first generation of the number five jungle carbine. So I'm gonna call this the jungle carbine from here forward, that, that's kind of what these were um, dubbed. They are technically Lee Enfield number fives and whatever mark designation that they are. That is the technical name for these, but they got the kind of nickname of the jungle carbine. So this is it in full frame. Hopefully you guys can see there. Um, it's hard to put these rifles in full frame, but uh, yeah, so that's what this guy is. Now, why did I choose it and over the 3030 of the 94. So there's a few reasons. First off, uh, there's definitely a cool factor for me. I really like uh, jungle carbines. I always thought that they were really cool. And I love the idea of the 3030, um, or sorry, 303 British round in a really compact, really handy package. This is a jungle carbine for a reason. And once again, it is heavier than the 94, but this is still definitely a gun that I'm not encouraging you to shoot one handed, but it's still definitely a gun that is light enough that you can hold and move around and maneuver with one hand. And so what that means is these are very handy rifles, um, especially for when we're talking about like shooting a full power round. And what I mean by full power is something like 30-06, 303 British, eight mil Mauser, um, you know, those like uh, original rounds of World War II, uh, this is one of them. And essentially 303 British is like a tea drinking 30-06. It is still a very hard hitting round. It puts out around 24 to 2,500 pound feet of energy. So we're looking at about four to 500 pounds more in energy um, than the 3030. And we are also <clears throat> looking at um, an increased magazine capacity. So these guys are running 10 round magazines. Another nice feature of these that is not super applicable for my situation, but these are removable magazines. You can pull it out of here. I'm not gonna do it for this video, but um, you can though. You can also strip or clip feed these guns with your very prominent strip or clip. Uh, area right there. So you can hold 10 rounds of 303 British in these. Now, the biggest disadvantage I would say of this gun as opposed to the lever action is of course going from lever action to bolt action. So certainly both of them are manual operated actions. You do have to be proficient to be fast with either of them. However, typically speaking, lever guns do tend to be easier to run. In addition to this, you can also 
top off a lever gun because you have a side loading gate as opposed to the magazine of this. Now, hypothetically, you could remove the magazine, top off the magazine, reload the gun. But if you were actually like needing to stop, pause, you know, like say you drop the bear, but you're not really sure, you could always put a couple rounds in your lever gun and then, you know, approach the bear that way. So, I mean, hypothetically, you could do that, whereas you can't really um, do that. You can't top off a bolt action rifle. Now, fun fact, you can actually ghost load these things to 11 rounds. So that definitely gives you a nearly double magazine capacity over the six rounds of the Winchester 94. So hypothetically, it is um, a, a about, it's about double the magazine capacity of a much, or not necessarily much, but a noticeably harder hitting round. Now, things to note, this is um, other disadvantages to this gun are that you do have is slightly longer, like overall length is about, I think three or four inches longer. That's primarily due to this um, flash hider here. If it wasn't for the flash hider, these would be pretty much the same size. In addition to that too, you also notice that you're stepping up to a much thicker gun and it's only more noticeable because you have, or it's even more noticeable because you have a bolt that sticks off to the side. So once again, the nice thing with a lever gun is the action is in line with the gun so with a bolt it's going to be off to the side so disadvantages um, there are pros and cons to both of them but like I said the first thing for me was that I really just think that jungle carbines are cool the other thing was that I was able to still stay with a very affordable choice um, for a rifle I'm also not afraid because this gun is it's banged up it is a collectible but this one's also a user so you know I'm not afraid to throw this in the truck of course once again you also have a hooded front sight with this guy now granted this is a little bit more of a military hooded front sight so it's not a full you know closed hooded front sight it is open so essentially has spurs on the sides and then to make it even better and more actually useful as a hooded front sight you have big holes cut on the sides so that allows a lot of light in to your hood um, which is something that's worth noting if you ever shoot in certain lighting situations a fully hooded front sight is actually problematic because it can block or the sun can block out parts of light from your front sight post making it very difficult to acquire targets so um, just as a front as a fun fact that's actually why most hooded front sights are no longer full hoods and uh, why people pretty quickly went to very open kind of pronged out hooded front sights anyways that's neither here nor there um, I will say I do like the sights of this gun a bit more because of course the lever gun is two things kind of kind of suck with the sights on a lever action one they're almost always buckhorn which buckhorns are typically harder to acquire um, quickly like when you throw your gun up um, they're typically harder to acquire and then also two um, the sight radius on a buckhorn sight is almost always in front of your action naturally and so you have a shorter sight radius as opposed to a little bit longer sight radius on this guy now of course it does have the graduated sight but you know i mean <laughs> probably won't really realistically be using that so it is there but you know like honestly i'm not going to pull out the uh the good old uh, artillery sight, so to speak, the like artillery fire sight, or just your overall long distance. So I like that it has its short, just overall good to go, a sub uh, 100 meter sight. And then of course you can step it out. So aside from that, uh, like I said, I wanted it because it was cool. It's, it's a cool gun to me. It does hold more ammunition in the gun than the 3030 or the Winchester 94. And then it also has a harder hitting round. And it honestly isn't, that much of a trade-off going from from a gun that's you know like this gun isn't so much larger or so much wider or thicker this is still once again a, very much a carbine so it's very much designed to be very handy and very nimble and so if i had to use this as a brush gun if i had to use this in survival if i had to use this as a truck gun absolutely i would feel in good company with this gun um, in all of those situations. So that is the truck gun as a whole. It is, like I said, for me, a multi-purpose wilderness tool. Uh, for me, like I said, some people, you'll watch different videos on YouTube about why people have truck guns and what they believe in or what they have for those. Typically, they're more like pistol caliber carbines. They're more like, um, sometimes they're just straight pistols. And so typically speaking, most people, 
um, you know, carry lighter calibers and these full rifle calibers. But like I said, for me, in my particular use case, I want something that can easily penetrate, um, you know, bears if you have to shoot them in a suboptimal place. Once again, you know, people say like, oh, buy a 4570, you know, buy X, Y, or Z. And not only are those a bit cost prohibitive, but also to, um, you know, these guns do work very well. Uh, I have absolutely no fears with, especially like I said, um, dropping black bears with a gun like this, it will absolutely do the job um, every time. So once again, it's one of those guns that if you do choose to run something like this uh, for yourself, you're gonna want to, you know, practice with it, make sure that you're proficient, but, um, yeah, so that is the the truck gun for Wilderness Adventures. It is a, a, pr a pretty cool tool. It's not only a piece of history, but it is also a very useful and I think really checks off all the the check marks for me uh, personally. So I thought I would do this video more as a comparison of you know, what's going out and what's coming in. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And uh, if you guys want to see more gun content, if you guys want to see more gun content, just let me know in the comment section below. As always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.